This year, we continued our usual interviews and surveys with clients, giving them free reign to give us their unvarnished feedback. But we did so with new tools that allowed us to add in features like capability tags and sentiment analyses. When we ran that through our database with almost 400,000 tagged pieces of commentary, drawn from over 35,000 respondents, we were able to pull out some really interesting data about law firm performance. Even now, we're still combing through the data in more granular detail, looking at what a client's value in litigation as opposed to private equity, or what a private equity client in Chicago picks out compared to one in New York, but we can take a more general look at the nationwide level today. What you'll see here is a top line view of what clients were talking to us about in those free form interviews during Chambers USA research. I wanted to explore some of these in more depth and let you know more about the good and the bad that we hear about. So we've bypassed the sophistication tag as we can safely assume that every firm that's ranked in Chambers demonstrates skills in complex and sophisticated work. Instead, we've zoomed in on the commercial awareness tag. As you can see on the screen, this attribute was of particular importance to clients who see the need for firms to act more like business advisors rather than offering straight down the line legal advice. From my own experience as a former private equity researcher, Clients in these fast-paced environments, often with lean in-house legal teams themselves, really value a lawyer who can offer a legal opinion that's tinged with some real-world appreciation of the client's business and the state of the market. I know this sounds very straightforward, but increasingly, this is an area where we get, where we get some of our most nuanced criticisms of law firms from their client referees. Take a look at the quote in the middle. Clients will very quickly pick up on issues with commerciality and just as quickly tell us about it. But as I mentioned, we were able to pick out the firms which clients consider the best performing in these areas. And I can tell you that the firm which received the most positive feedback for its commerciality was Latham & Watkins. We'll go back to the overall picture and we'll take a look at the cross-border tag. It might be small, but a large amount of the biggest in-house clients that we spoke to we're increasingly pointing out the strength of integrated teams across multiple international jurisdictions. The biggest clients who face complex regulatory requirements, for example, increasingly prize expertise in the US, Europe, and beyond. And the boom in outbound investment late last year saw a lot of feedback praising transatlantic strength. We can see the proof of it in the legal market today. When you look at the rampant expansion of firms like Freshfields and Allen and & Overy, alongside the geographical expansion across the globe from traditional US firms. We can see that a lot of big players are betting on their international pedigree to win big clients. I think you could all have guessed which firm would have received the most positive feedback here. I think every client of Baker McKenzie that I've ever spoken to points out the sheer breadth of their resources and talent in almost every major business center on the planet a snippet of which you can see on the screen. Let's go back to the big picture. The next tag I wanted to look at was delivery to budget and value for money. We've been asking clients about this for years at Chambers, but over the past few, we've seen a real evolution in how in-house clients see value for money, and it's not always in a positive way. We've never really been able to quantify it before now, but running the numbers this year allowed us to go beyond anecdotal evidence and see that this is the area where clients had the most negative sentiments. As you can see from the bottom quote, there are definitely instances where money is no object, but overall, fee structures and billing rates are increasingly seen as a bit too unwieldy for all but the most important mandates. The two complaints we see above both in terms of the raw numbers and budget forecasting, are two of the most common criticisms we receive from clients who may otherwise be very satisfied with their legal providers. What we're really interested in is whether this leads to a bigger flight to mid-market firms for those slightly more straightforward matters, and what a potentially smaller pool of work does for firms who price themselves at the top end of the market. We'll be watching that with real interest going forward. More positively, however, there was some great feedback around firms offering alternative fee structures or making an effort to slim down the amount of time billed to their matters. That's obviously something particular to each firm and not something that we will ever release to the wider public. 
But when we looked at which firms consistently got the best feedback for the overall value they represent, it was Sidley Austin that came out on top. Very finally for today, I wanted to round off the event by looking at our last tag, client service, which is really what Chambers started off analyzing back in 2003 when we first launched in the USA. Now the value of client service is so obvious that I won't go into too much depth here, but what I did want to point out is that in almost every conversation, in-house legal departments most often equate client service with responsiveness. Responsiveness is probably the single most common word in our database and probably has been for the past 10 years. It's also an area where we tend to get significant amounts of critical commentary from clients of all firms, from the AMLAW 100 to small boutiques. The majority of clients that we speak to want a constant channel of communication on the status of their matters. However, there's always going to be a bit of tension here given the attorney on the other side would probably receive even more criticism if they spent their time and their billing increments on a detailed update. One thing that has been interesting for us is the more detailed praise that we're starting to get for law firm's tech tools, particularly two-way systems for status updates. Now, while I think we're still some way off investigating legal technology as a key criteria of client service, it's something that clients and us at Chambers are going to be increasingly interested in analyzing. But to recognize the firm which gets the most positive feedback for its client service, we'll turn once again to Latham and Watkins whose team continues to accrue outstanding feedback for its client service.